Good evening, everyone. This is Project 24, the podcast, the fun podcast. My name is Adrian. I am your host. Some of you all know who I am. If not, hey, my name is Adrian. I am the host of this show. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, I for the viewers that usually watch, uh, I apologize. I was supposed to post a, this episode. I was supposed to, uh, supposed to post yesterday. That's a tongue twister. Um, I was supposed to post this yesterday, but I got really, I was really tired. I was fell asleep on the couch <laughs> really early and uh, I woke up, just didn't have the energy to do it. So I apologize, but uh, here we are Tuesday night. Um, I'm going to recap the NHL trade deadline. So yeah, I don't know. It was a little bit different this year, obviously with the, with the, the current stage of the world. Um, Monday, like yesterday's deadline was pretty slow. Uh, the Monday, obviously, would be like being the last day. A lot of the most of the trades happened uh, like last week, uh, like Saturday, Sunday, even Friday, I think, too. Uh, I understand the the reasoning for it because um, obviously with uh, the, the 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 teams want to make the trades earlier, so the players don't have to be in quarantine for a long time. Uh, you know, the, or course, sorry, the quarantine ends quicker. And, you know, they get the player quicker. So I, I understand the reasoning for it. It makes sense. Um, but, again, uh, man, I first off, i got to say, I'm really, really jealous of the Leafs getting Nick Foligno. I just want to get that off my back. Uh, I mean, I'm jealous because I've always been a fan of Nick Foligno. Even back in, like, the Ottawa days, uh, they talked about him a lot. And uh, I just like his style of play, you know. He's a gritty player who um great defensively. He got got a good shot, decent hands, you know. I mean, he's kind of not the same player he used to be, starting to decline a little bit, but uh good good leader, great great guy in the room. Uh he can still put him anywhere in the lineup. I think he can succeed. So um always been a fan of Felino. Pretty jealous again, pretty jealous of the the Leafs forgetting him, but I don't know. I look at the price. They gave up a first and fourth rounder for him. So, a little bit, a little bit, a uh, little bit of a risky one. I mean, uh, I think Felino, if I'm correct, he only has like four goals on the year. Uh, I'm gonna check right now. Um, so it's a little bit much to give up for a first rounder. But I mean, the Leafs are going all in, so they want they want everyone. You know what I mean? So, uh, let's see, is he even in the? Yeah, here. Mr. Nick Foligno stats seven goal. Okay. Okay. I was wrong. Not three goals. I'm sorry, Nick. I didn't mean to disrespect you like that. Uh, seven goals, nine assists, nine assists, 16 points in 42 games. I mean, he was scoring at a much higher rate before. So, uh, um, it's okay though. I mean, Hey, he's a, again, like I said, he's a great role player. Um, personally, again, I'm jealous of that. They got him, but I personally wouldn't have given up a first rounder for him, but Hey, the Leafs are going all in, and I respect that. And they they have a great chance at the Cup this year, so why not, right? And they also got um, David Riddish from Calgary. That's a good pickup too. You got the fringe starters there with Campbell and Riddish now. Obviously, Anderson's done. He uh, he won't be back in Toronto next year. He's a free uh, upcoming free agent, and yeah, he's yeah he's done. He hasn't been really that great from the last couple of seasons. Uh, inconsistency a lot of the times and yeah i don't know there's a lot of big trades though uh the taylor hall trade i mean buffalo got fleeced on that in my humble opinion uh, uh adam got it to chicago yeah he's not bad kulikov to the oilers i think the oilers are going all in too they're trying to make the playoffs they're trying to uh, they're they're in a spot but um yeah they're trying to push to uh i think the jets made a trade for like jordy ben Good depth defenseman. Uh, I love. I've always liked Jordy. He's he played good for Montreal. I Florida Panthers man. Uh, Florida Panthers are going for the cup. The Islanders, uh, a lot of good teams, and uh, yeah, the Sam Bennett trade too. They got a second round pick and a prospect named Emil Heineman. I guess he's a European kid, if I'm correct. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, Montreal is kind of quiet. Uh, Got, well, not not quiet, but uh, they could have probably maybe people thought they probably should have done more, but they didn't have the I don't think they really had the cap space to do more. I know they got John Merrill from the Detroit from the Red Wings and uh, Eric Gustafson from the Flyers, so gave up some picks for them. 
Uh, who else do we got? Eric Branson. I don't know, man. Like, all due respect to Eric Branson, he's not a very good defenseman, so I don't know why teams keep on trading for him. Seems like a great guy in the room and just a nice guy overall, but just, just he's not really that good. Uh, we got Anthony Mantha. That was that one was a surprise. Hold on one sec. Grab my dog. Come here, buddy. Say hi to the camera, buddy. You're gonna be my guest today. All right. So uh, yeah, we got Anthony Mantha. That was a surprise. I thought Mantha was gonna be a lifer in Detroit for our least. Uh, trade traded Verant, Jacob Verana, Panic, Richard Panic, Bonic. First round and second round pick. That's a lot. It's a pretty steep price, but I mean, he already scored a goal tonight for for the Caps, so it's gonna work out somehow. Um, who else do we got here? Ben Hutton to the Leafs. Yeah, Leafs grabbed a lot of depth pieces too. Soderberg to Colorado. Yeah, Soderberg's okay. Hey, buddy. Oh, thank you. Hey, buddy. Say hi to the camera. Say hi to the camera. Can't have you licking my legs. I'm wearing shorts right now, so he's kind of licking my legs. I can't stand it. I'm sorry, buddy, but you got to stop doing that, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, the Je- it was Jeff Carter. That one was us. Uh, I mean, I kind of saw it coming. The Kings are another team that's selling. So uh, Pittsburgh's been on a roll since they – Oh, okay. I guess you don't want to be here. Oh, I just got to bite the bullet, I guess. Uh <laughs> Yeah, Jeff Carter to Pittsburgh for a third round pick, third and fourth pick, conditional. So see how that goes. I mean, Carter's kind of past his prime days, but uh we'll see. I don't know. Carter could end up being a good again, good guy down the down the stretch for Pittsburgh. So we'll see what happens there. Taylor Hall and Lazar for Andres Bjork and a second round pick. Bjork's not bad, but uh yeah, Hall wasn't having wasn't playing well in Buffalo, so his value was is a little bit, a little bit on the low side. Uh, you got the David Savard trade and brought David Savard and Brian L- L- Lashoff going to Tampa Bay. Three team trade between Columbus, and Detroit. Yeah, Brandon Montour. I think I, I don't know if I mentioned Brandon Montour going to the Panthers. That was Saturday afternoon that trade happened. Um, yeah, John Merrill, uh, Habs traded a Hayden Verbeek who's from Laval Rocket. Fifth round pick as well. Yeah, I mean a lot of trades. Um, man, it's yeah, Hayden Flurry got traded to Anaheim. I was kind of surprised about that. He was a high draft pick, and uh, guess they guess he wasn't working out. So, um, yeah, it's a different one though. Um, fuck. I mean, it's it's uh, usually with the trade deadline too. After the deadline, you kind of know who's gonna be a Stanley Cup contender, who's gonna go far in the playoffs. Um, Man, I mean, obviously the Leafs, the Panthers, maybe the Hurricanes, they're they're doing well right now. They're on top. I just checked the standings yesterday. They're on top of the standings. Then you had the Islanders with getting Zajac and Palmieri, so there was that too. Um, Boston obviously going, going getting aggressive and getting Lazar and Taylor Hall. Tampa is always in the mix. Colorado made a couple of splashes, grabbing Dubnik as well on Saturday afternoon. Good goaltending depth, have a fringe starter. Or maybe not, maybe not a French starter because uh, Dubnik's not really like as uh, good as he used to be. So uh, more of more of a backup role. A good backup though. He he served the point. He served the purpose. You know, uh, the Oilers made a couple of decent moves. Uh, so they're obviously going to be, um, yeah, there's the Oilers and obviously the Habs are going to be in this mix. But I don't think they'll be like a, I don't know how good they'll be, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's I think honestly, I think the Panthers are gonna go to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, I don't know who's coming out of the West. I haven't checked the standings yet, to be honest. Panthers are looking really good this year. Some of those guys that they have in that team have just really, really, really gelled well together. Uh, and obviously, you can't go wrong with Joel Quenville as your head coach too. Obviously, he has his uh, three three Stanley Cups with um, fucking uh, Chicago. Yeah, no, you can't go wrong. Uh, Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, I forgot about Pittsburgh too. Pittsburgh. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna make a push too. They've been really good since the the management change. So Berkey and Hextall are doing good for them there. Good job, boys. So uh, yeah, but uh, man, the Panthers. I re- honestly like. 
that team has gone through like th- that team and I say this in the most respectful way possible, but whatever fans they have have gone through so much shit in like the whatever 20 plus years of existence they have 27, 28 years. And um, just a lot of crappy teams. They made the finals once in 1996, the year I was born. Maybe two months before I was born, they were in a Stanley Cup final. And <laughs> or no, not even two months, probably like a month. I lied. It's June, probably. So, yeah, I don't know, man. They Barkov's obviously a franchise player. Huberto's another like fantastic hockey player. I love Jonathan Huberto. I would love to see him be, be in a Habs uniform one day. That would be spectacular. Um, yeah, I, I mean, their their goaltending is a little better. Bobrovsky, I think, is playing better from my understanding. Uh, Chris, uh, the the backup goalie Drieger, I think his name is. He's playing great too. He's had to fill in sometimes, and uh, just overall, such a well built team. Um, good for them. I'm so happy for that franchise. They're going to be uh, one of a force to reckon with in the playoffs this year. And uh, yeah, I really hope them. I hope they go far. Honestly, like I like to see those small market teams. Even like when Dallas made the finals last year, I was pretty happy because you know Dallas is more of a smaller market. You know. Texas is not really a hockey uh, hockey state or whatever you want to call it, hockey market. Not a traditional hockey market, but, you know, they uh, whenever the team's playing good, I've seen the games in the past and playoffs and, like, regular season, when they're, like, top of the standings, they sell out games. So it's a fringe market, I'd say. A lot of these small market teams are fringe markets. So they, um, yeah, they just, if they're playing well, they'll sell. Right, and that's just a lot of the smaller markets. You know, when they're the talk of the town, they'll fan, people will be going, spending money on them, getting tickets, will you name it. So, um, yeah, honestly, I'm going to talk about the Habs. Uh, yeah, it was Victor Mete got claimed by Ottawa yesterday. I'm not really surprised about that. Like again, I like Mete, but um, he wasn't really. You know, a top defenseman. He was kind of potent out to be as one when they drafted him. And, you know, he had some, he has credentials. He's still, I mean, he's still 22. He's still a young, he's still really young. But, I mean, I don't know. They gave him chances in Montreal. I feel that they kind of rushed him a little bit, maybe. Um, They should have given him more time in the minors, in my honest opinion. Um, Smaller defensemen like that with not much, uh, physicality obviously uh he has trouble boxing out guys in front of the net you kind of want to build that right on your way to the the nhl so yeah i mean he the one upside he skates so well um they put him a lot with weber they put when he was obviously when he was with montreal they put him with weber and a lot of the slower defensemen because again he can get back if he if he if like weber pinches or whoever his line mate is he can get back and uh, pin, uh recover you know maybe try to try to break up the two-on-one stuff like that so i don't know mete is not bad um i do hope him i do hope uh, wish him well in uh ottawa i know he was really well liked in the habs dressing room the mint brothers him and uh jesperi kakanyemi the mint brothers and um yeah they, they had that whole thing going and it was it was cool but um yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, hopefully he plays well. I think he scored a goal yesterday for Ottawa too, so that kind of hurts a little bit. But again, it's only one game. So um, yeah, I don't know. The Habs, I'm going to talk more about the Habs a little bit more. Well, actually, a couple more topics. Um, yeah, I mean, the Habs had a little bit of a quiet trade deadline. Well, not really quiet, but uh, the biggest concern has been the blue line. Uh, obviously, Mete's gone. The um, blue line got kind of full. Um. Yeah, John Merrill's good. He's better. He's better than some of the guys we have now. Uh, he's physical defenseman. He's good in front of the net. Obviously, he's physical. We need a guy like that who can really like, just, you know, box cross check guys and, you know, hack them, cross check them, get them, get them out, box them out. You know, we need a guy like that. He'll he'll do well with that. Um, Eric Gustafson. Honestly, I don't really know much about him. Um, I know he's kind of like a journeyman defenseman. I guess you can say journeyman. He's played with a few teams, I think, and he's just there for depth. And, you know, need him down the road. Um, 
yeah, no, I I like the John Merrill move though. He's uh, he's gonna be pretty solid for us. So, uh, speaking of more defense, oh, according to Darren Drager, let me just pull this up on my computer. So, I saw uh, on Twitter yesterday from Darren Drager's account. Uh, so if it's coming from him, I think it's pretty legit. I mean, he's a pretty legitimate source. I I can believe it if it's coming from him, um, but. So, obviously, Tony D'Angelo. Uh, Tony D'Angelo, I guess a lot of y'all know who he is. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he hasn't played since January 30th. Obviously, there was the altercation with uh, Georgiev, the goalie. Uh, they got into an altercation after a game. He hasn't he hasn't played in, like, almost three months. Like, I can't believe that. Uh, they've been trying to trade him. Um you know, they were trying to loan him to an American Hockey League team. Nobody would take him, which is pretty bad. Waivers, like, you name it. Like, they've been trying to shop him since, and he hasn't played since the end of January. And um, so apparently he rejected the offer to terminate his deal. So terminate, like, kind of like what happened with Mike Richards, where, like, you know, they, they just terminate his contract. like, goodbye. No buyout. Just, it's a lot of other politics involved to do it. But, um he didn't want to terminate his contract, and apparently, if he did agree and became a free agent, he agreed to terminate his contract. Apparently, the Habs were going to sign him. Bergevin was ready to sign him. Very interested in him, quote unquote. Oh man, uh, I know a lot of Hab fans weren't happy about that because his uh, he is who he is, right? Um, he is a he is a problem in the dressing room. He's trouble. Um, there's this political side and, you know, his past with, like, racism and stuff. There's all that shit. But, uh, honestly, like, if he's actually willing... This is, this is like, I'm probably in the minority of this, like, of this opinion. And, may, like, I'm probably... Not many people would agree. But I think, honestly, give him another chance. Um, real shit, though. Like, real talks. Like, he's better than a lot of the defensemen we have right now. Uh, we can use a guy to kind of quarterback the power play. He's... A great power play specialist. Uh, you can't go wrong about that. Defensively, he is garbage, I will say. He's not going to really help on the defensive side of the puck. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, that's a tough one. It's a tough one. I know a lot of people don't like him. A lot of hockey fans don't like him. Um, and, again, if he's willing to be a better teammate and, you know, just improve, um, I'd be okay with it, man. I I would totally be okay with it. Uh, again, he's better than half the guys we got, but he's not, not very, I don't know if he's still like willing, like to not to change, like if he's still going to be a jackass then like, yeah, stay away from him. I mean, you don't need those kind of toxic players and especially like the Habs are trying to make a playoff spot right now. Like, I don't know if it's a, it's a, it's a touchy one, man. It's really a touchy one because like, fuck, I don't know. It's a really, really, really touchy one. I honestly, I would take a chance on him. I'd give him a second chance, see how he does. You know, if he fucking uh, decides to be an asshole, then hey, sign him on a one-year deal and see how he is. Uh, you know, if he's behaving, then hey, and he plays well, it's a it's a it's a combo, right? So, I don't know. I'd be willing to give Tony D another chance. I don't. A lot of hockey fans obviously say fuck that and. Um, Personally, if I think he's just gonna go play in Europe somewhere, go play in like KHL. They don't care about Russia. They don't care about any like the social justice warriors here. <laughs> they don't care. So they sign all the NHL uh, canceled the canceled NHLers like uh, Leipzig, Voinov, um, Bill Peters got a coaching job there. Like they don't care about any of like these these social justice guys like this stuff. So. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, but again, obviously, it's not going to happen because uh, he doesn't want to terminate his contract. So we'll see what happens from there. I don't know. We'll see. He's probably done in the NHL. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of a shame though. Um, he is a talented player. He's a he's a good hockey player. He's he's great. It's just uh, he's got his own issues. He's got to deal with, I guess. And um, you know, it's just it is what it is, right? So. It's no shame. He's uh, talented. He's better than a lot of defensemen that are still employed. It's just, you know, he's got to get his attitude straight. That's all. Just be a better person. Be a better teammate. 
Um, that's it. That's all you can do. You know, it's uh, it's not about you. You know, just just think about the team, right? Let's let's uh, have that team mindset the whole time. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Uh, hope wish him well. Don't I don't wish him any ill doing. So he's 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 got his own problems he's got to deal with. But uh, if he's willing to change, maybe maybe someone will give him a chance again. Maybe give it a couple of years. Go play in Europe for a bit. Kind of clear the dust a bit. And people might forget. I don't know. Twitter doesn't forget. Twitter never forgets. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens with uh, Mr. Tony D there. So, uh, I'm going to wrap this up soon. Not really a long episode. Um, but uh, this is not really a hockey one. This is kind of going more to the NFL. But, uh, yeah, I saw Julian Edelman got released by the Patriots, and then he retired right after. So, um, yeah, man, he, I'm going to miss him straight up. I was pretty sad. I was not surprised that he got let go. He's had injury problems, and uh, he even said that he wasn't going to be healthy going into this season. So he wouldn't have been able to play either way. So, um, yeah, just just Jules, uh, Julian Edelman, just thanks for everything, man. Uh, you're one of my favorite players, uh, one of my favorite football players um, on and off the field. Uh, you're a good person, uh, a true leader. Um, obviously, that catch in uh, the Super Bowl was at 51 unbelievable catch yeah super bowl 51 that catch was still i'll always remember that crazy 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 <laughs> so um yeah no thanks thanks again edelman happy retirement uh i was uh, i tweeted to you i remember yesterday i was like uh, i hope i'm gonna miss you in pats nation and i was like i hope you get better you know hope you, you heal up soon so you can play and then like literally like 20 minutes later he announced his retirement i was like oh well that aged well so <laughs> Um, yeah, again, Julian Edelman, uh, all the best, man. Um, happy retirement. And uh, yeah, all the best. That's all I can say. Uh, going to really miss you for sure. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to talk more. Actually, you know what? I'm going to talk more a little bit about the trade of the line. Fuck it. Um, yeah, I mean, the Islanders, man, they they added some, some they bulked up there, but um Fucking Islanders. Like, I know this sparked some controversy. I mean, I'm surprised it did now. It's kind of weird. I mean, this has been going on. This has been a Lou Lamorello thing for years. But um, fucking uh, Paul Mary being clean shaven. And uh, that caused like a whole stir on the internet because, you know, not having beards. I mean, personally, I think it's so dumb and outdated. Like, come on, man. Like, it's, it's 2021. Like. I understand if you're in like a profession, like, you know, you're an accountant or, uh, you know, you're, you work for maybe work for the bank, even, even with the bank, like the bank managers, they all have seen the bank employees, like the men, they have beards, like they don't really care. Right. And obviously for religious reasons, they can't tell you to shave. Right. So that, that policy might, I saw somebody bring that up on Twitter about how that can end up being an issue if he still goes with that forward and, um, that can be that could be an issue in the future with like you know you, they should have like if you you know for religious region reasons sorry uh, some players might have res- maybe in the future they might have uh, an exemption to that and it might cause he, we'll see how he reacts but that can cause like a serious serious problem personally I I don't think it's really a big deal it's just facial hair it's not like you have like um fuck it's not like you um it's not bad it's not a bad thing like i mean i've never been to a job now that has said that i've had to shave i would probably quit that job if they did i'd be pissed (laughs) um they're kind of yeah most places are pretty open-minded about that stuff now which is good like honestly i don't see the big deal like if you keep it clean like you clean the beard and you groom it like i don't see the big issue right so uh lamorella man it's not the 1950s anymore dude like not everyone has uh, gelled back hair, jet black gelled, gelled back hair and a clean shave. It's not like that anymore, bud. So uh, get with it. Stop being like the Yankees. Uh, stop being such a boomer. <laughs> um, oh, man, that shit bothers me so much. Imagine if Brent Burns got traded there. Brent Burns, like, or Joe Thornton. Well, I think Joe Thornton would be whatever because he's gone without a beard after... He started growing it. Imagine Brent Burns. 
<laughs> Brent Burns with oh my god, Brent Burns would probably hold out until they let him they let him grow it or keep it. I mean, sorry. Oh my god, that would be amazing. I I think if if uh, I mean personally the the direction the Sharks are going in, um, I can see him eventually getting traded. Speaking of trades and trade deadline, maybe next year. They still suck next year. I can see them just completely blowing it up, trading Burns, Kane, all those guys. You know, so. He's probably gonna put the Islanders on his no trade list. Let's be real. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna look back at that. I'm gonna circle back to that maybe next year if if Burns ever gets tra- uh, uh, they they ask him to, if he even has a no movement clause. I don't know what his contract's like. I would assume so because he is a, fran- a franchise player. I I love Burnsy. He's awesome. So that'd be awesome <laughs> if he uh, fucking uh, puts the Islanders on his no trade uh, t- uh, list. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Fuck. Oh man. The Islanders with their fucking no beard policy. Lamorello, buddy. Like and the Yankees, man. They're both bad for that. Like, just get just leave it. You haven't won anything in years. I think uh, like in the beginning of all like when we started this up uh, the show, I think Quinn and I even talked about that. I was like, why do the Yankees still do that? And why are, like these Lamorello, wherever he goes. Obviously, like, they haven't won in so long. So, like, why is it an issue? Like, obviously, it's not a winning culture anymore. Like, the Yankees haven't won since 09. Devils haven't won since, like, 03. Um, the Islanders, <laughs> the Leafs, too. When he was on the Leafs, he had that policy. It's like, dude, like, who cares? It's just facial hair. Like, seriously. They're like, let these guys be themselves. Like, jeez. And like again, they. I remember like even Dale Weiss talked about this on uh, his ha- his show Habs Tonight, the one that I was on. Um, like they always talk about growing the game, but like they still have basically like he, like the word how we emphasize it. He said like, um, you know, like they, they like Batman in the NHL. They talk about trying to grow the game, but like they're still like the players are not allowed to have personalities. Like it makes no sense. You're kind of like contradicting yourself. So. I don't know, man. I think they should just let them be. Let the players be. Like, look at the rest of the leagues in the NFL, the MLB. Well, the MLB, that's a little of a touchy one. They don't, they don't like personality there too. That one's got to change. But they're the players are more aggressive about the change, which is good. Uh, but again, NBA and NFL, they let the players be who they are, man. And that's the leagues are popular because of that. So, I don't know. Even even in UFC, like Dana White just lets them do like be who they are. Let lets them be who they are. No, like none of this bot bullshit. Like just. Let them let let these guys like be themselves, you know. Let them be themselves. So, uh, anyways, I think this is gonna wrap it up here. Um, oh, man, NHL trade deadline, fucking quiet. But I mean, a lot of teams are gonna be are gonna be moving up. You see the Leafs, the Panthers, the Capitals, Islanders. Um, Pittsburgh, Boston, Tampa, Colorado. Look out for all those teams. They're gonna make a push for the playoffs. I think I think it could be a rematch of uh 1996 finals. How about that? 25 years later, Panthers and Avalanche rematch. That would be kind of cool, actually. I think the Panthers would win that this time, though, because last time it was the Colorado swept them in four games. And uh, I, I think it'd be the opposite. Well, not a sweep, but the opposite. I think Panthers win that maybe in six. So yeah, we'll see. Panthers and uh Panthers and Avalanche rematch in the finals 25 years later. Anyways, guys, uh, this is the end of our episode. Um, kind of a short one today. I mean, I just want to talk about the trade deadline and a couple of those other topics too. So uh, try to stretch it out as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, thanks for joining us tonight, guys. Oh my God, my eyes itchy. Ugh. Ugh. Anyways, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, Tuesday, you don't really post on a Tuesday, but uh, shit happens. But uh, anyways, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, go Habs, go for all the Hab fans out there. This is Project 24. We're signing off and uh, have a great night.